Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of sword, but we're going to be looking at arrows. Oh, yeah. Arrows. Bow and arrows? Really? All right. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Numbers, chapter 24. We're going to read about Balaam and what he says. Uh, he was a he was a prophet of the Lord. And if you read, I think it's the book of Jude. Uh, Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness. He didn't want to wait for the Lord's blessings. He wanted the earthly blessings now. He didn't want to wait until the world to come. So, Numbers 24, verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, enchantments, witchcraft, and he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes and the spirit of god came upon him and he took up his parable and said balaam the son of beor hath said and the man whose eyes are open hath said he hath said which heard the words of god which saw the vision of the almighty falling into a trance but having his wide his eyes but having his eyes open verse 5 how goodly are thy tents o jacob and thy tabernacles o israel a tabernacle is a dwelling place uh usually a temporary place like a makeshift shelter um by the way if you don't know it israel had come out of egypt and now was going into the land of canaan the Canaanites land and uh, one of the Canaanite kings hired this prophet of the Lord uh, to curse Israel but uh, the prophet of the Lord wouldn't he would well he couldn't curse Israel he couldn't do it so you know what he did he told the king of the Canaanites, one of the kings of the Canaanites, to uh, have his loose women seduce the Israelite men, which is a really easy thing to do when you're young and, you know, watching a half-naked woman run around. So, uh, yeah. And then God would get mad and allow them to uh, do some judgment and punishment against Israel for fornication. And what's even better than uh, physical fornication to, in reference to making the Lord angry, is take up the heathen satanic practices of the women that the men are getting involved with. You know, practice some Satanism. So you could have physical and spiritual fornication. Really make the Lord angry. So I should have said that before I started, but here we go. Numbers 24, verse 5. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. Well, Jacob is Israel. It's just syn synonyms. As the valleys are they spread forth as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of L-I-G-N, line, aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees, and as cedar trees beside the waters. 
He shall pour the water out of his bucket, and his seed, children, shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him, Israel, God brought him forth out of Egypt. Book of Exodus, people. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Uh, let's stop for a second here. What is a unicorn? A unicorn in modern day application is an Asian black rhino. An African rhino has two horns. An Asian black rhino has one horn. Matter of fact, its name is even unicornis. Rhino, rhinoceros or rhinoceros. Rhinoceros unicornis. Unicorn us. Look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. So when did a unicorn become a, a horse with a horn sticking out of its forehead? Oh, wait, that's the media. Yeah. And I don't know if you know it. Uh, rhinos are really strong. You're not going to make a pet out of a rhino. Matter of fact, they're not too, um, they're generally not too friendly. So, God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He, Israel, shall eat up the nations, his enemies, uh, well, with God's help. Well, God's going to do it with, yeah, God's going to do it, actually. Um, he shall eat up the nations his enemies and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows arrows so he crouched he lay down as a lion as a great lion who shall stir him up blessed is he that blesses thee and cursed is he that curseth thee Wow. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. Balak is the king of the one of the Canaanite tribes. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandments of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord said, but what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto thy people, come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people, Israel, what this people shall do to thy people, the Canaanites, in the latter days. Latter, last days, right? And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Who is the star, the morning star? Revelation chapter 22, Jesus says he is the morning star. He's the root and offspring of David, who is a descendant of Jacob. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. What is a scepter? It was a staff, a royal staff that a king would carry. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheph. Uh, evidently, this is a Moabite king. 18. 
and Edom shall be a possession. Esau is Edom, people. Esau, Jacob's brother, the one that wanted to kill Jacob, the one that threw away his birthright for a bowl of beans. Oh, yeah. The one that married a Hittite, a Canaanite. Yeah, that Esau, Edom. And Edom shall be a possession. Possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Uh, Edom lived in Mount Seir. It was their territory. Verse 19. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, now who was Amalek? Amalek was a grandson of Esau Edom. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end, his last days at the end, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Huh. Amalek? You know, you could read in the Bible that God said he would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. You see, Esau and Edom married into the Canaanites. But the modern church world will tell you that, well, you know, that was then and now... God loves everybody and he wants everybody to be saved. But that's not what my Bible says. Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. That doesn't sound like they're going to be around, does it? No. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place. And thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted until Asher shall carry thee away captive. Who is Asher? One of the tribes of Israel. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? Ooh. All right. We've, I've had enough of numbers. Let's keep going. All right, let's read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Oh, uh, let's start in verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine, whose doctrine? The Lord's doctrine. I've heard pastors so-called say, oh, doctrine's not important. Just believe. Believe what? Like the Luciferians, that the, the Lucifer is Lord? Believe what? Doctrine's not important? Yes, doctrine is important. You're not saved by doctrine, but uh, if you think Jesus is Michael the Archangel, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you might have a problem one day. Or if you believe that uh, Jesus is Satan's brother, like the Mormons do, you might have a problem one day. Jesus might actually resent that. All right. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. As a small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. I did a Bible study on the rock. Uh, but to the Catholic Church, Christ isn't the rock, Peter is. But uh, as much as I like Peter, um, sorry, Peter, you're not the rock. Christ is 
the rock, the rock of my salvation. He is the rock. His work is perfect, and all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They, which is Israel, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is he not thy father that hath brought, bought thee? Yeah, the Lord bought us with a price. Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, did you know the Lord divided the nations? Uh, yeah. When he separated the sons of Adam. It was God that separated the people. He put the Asians in Asia, the blacks in Africa, and the whites in uh, Europe. The Lord did this. So who's trying to mix us all together? The God, God the Father believes in division and separation. Who's trying to mix us all together? Take a guess. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. The Bible's not about the whole world, people. The Bible's about one family. Jacob, Israel, from Adam. Verse 10. He, the Lord, found him, Israel, in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. This is right out of the book of Exodus, people. God took them out of Egypt into a desert land, a waste wilderness. He led them. He instructed them, gave them the Ten Commandments. He kept them as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. I did a Bible study on eagle's wings. Yeah, the Bible, uh, the Lord says he took Israel on the wings of a great eagle. So the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. He made them ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Now, I don't know if you know the story, but uh, they were out in the wilderness, in the desert, and there's no water. And the people are crying, oh, I'm thirsty, there's no water, we're all going to die here. And the Lord's told Moses to strike the rock. And Moses struck it twice, which he wasn't supposed to do, but, but water came out. And that rock was Christ, people. Verse 14, butter of kine. What is kine? K-I-N-E. That's just an old English word for cattle, cows. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jezurun, wax fat and kicked, Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then they forsook God, which made him. 
and lightly esteem the rock of his salvation. You know, that's what happens to our people. When we're cold and tired and hungry and we're about ready to be destroyed, don't they look up, get on their hands and knees and pray? Yeah. But when they're fat and happy and, you know, they got a burger in one hand and a beer in the other hand and they're watching the stupid bowl and, uh, you know, the quarterback throws another touchdown and they cheer and they forget all about the Lord. When people are when people are fat and happy, they forget all about the Lord. It's only when bad things happen. Well, buddy boy, let me tell you something. Judgment is coming upon this wicked Western world. Not just the U.S., but the U.K. and the E.U. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. What is abhorred? It means hated. When the Lord saw all this wickedness, them provoking him to jealousy with strange gods, sacrificing to the devils, God was mad. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, with their worthlessness. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire, a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Here's the punchline, arrows. Verse 23. I will heap mischiefs upon them. You know what it means? You know, he, that boy, he's full of mischief. Trouble. Uh, I could look in the mirror and say, yeah, I can see that when I was a kid. I was full of mischief. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. God's going to shoot his arrows upon Israel. Well, what does that mean? Verse 24. They shall be burnt with hunger. Famine. And devoured with burning heat. And with bitter destruction will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. Is that third world immigration? With the poison of serpents of the dust. Is that uh, slithering reptiles or is that the uh, seed of the serpent? Huh. The sword without war and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I fear the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely 
and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. In other words, the Lord doesn't want the enemy of his people to say, uh, Our gods destroy these people. We are the top dog. We did this. And the Lord didn't do it. No. No. Verse 28, For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Speaking of Israel, For that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the seeds, fields, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. This is the Lord talking about Israel. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. What's an asp? A very venomous serpent. Is not this laid up in stone with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and that there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? You see, when you're worshiping devils, God's going to let the devils have you. And when they do bad things to you, God's going to say, Well, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? Let the devils protect you people. Verse 38. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Yeah, you want to sacrifice to the devils? Let the devils protect you and help you. Don't call me. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, that's like a shiny sword, and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. God is going to reward those that hate him. I, the Lord, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. Drunk with blood. I will make mine arrows, the Lord's arrows, drunk with blood. And my sword, ooh, there's that sword. And my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hoshea, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 5. We're getting closer to the end here. Uh, let's see. And I, like I say, I got an entire playlist on Ezekiel. Ezekiel's a pretty important book, if you ask me. I mean, they're all important, but some more than others, if you 
ask me my opinion. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city, when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part and smite it about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw, draw out a sword after them. Now this is uh, symbolic. Um, a third part of the city, which is comparing the hair, is going to be burnt. Uh, a third is going to be killed with a knife or a sword. And then a third part is going to be scattered in the wind and be chased by the enemy with a sword. Verse 3. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. So there's going to be a few hairs or people left. And that's it, a remnant. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but it, Jerusalem and the land of Israel, not the what's calling itself that nowadays, but that land area is where the continents all meet. Af North, North Africa, Asia Minor, and Europe. They all congregate in that little area there. So, there was always a uh, and I believe the Garden of Eden was in that area. So that's where the beginning of the nations was. So they were always getting in the way of conquering armies. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, this is Jerusalem. Remember he took the hares and burned them and hit them with a knife and scattered them to the wind. This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations. I have set it in the middle of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness. She took God's laws and turned them into evil. She hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. And my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. So all the nations that were around Israel were bad. But God's saying Israel became worse than they were. Yeah. Seven. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statues, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, am against thee. I'm against you people and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. Ooh, God says, I'm going to punish you and I'm going to let everybody watch. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations, because of all the wickedness and evil you've done. Ten. Oh, this is rough. Therefore the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Famine is going to be so poor, so bad 
There's going to be cannibalism. Well, guess what? When you see uh, the word natural flavors on certain types of foods, just remember something. Those natural flavors might be coming from planned parenthood. Yeah. I don't want to say any more because you know who's listening. But if you want to write me and ask me what I mean, I'll be happy to explain it to you. Verse 11, Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely, because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I diminish thee. Neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. Sounds like God is P.O.'d. If you know what that means. Verse 12. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. Well, you know what? When there's famine and there's no food, your body cannot maintain its... Uh, 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 what would you say? The immune system. So you get sick. So fam pestilence always follows famine. And a third part shall fall by the sword. War. Round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw a sword after them. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So what shall be a reproach and a taunt and instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee, when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes, I, the Lord, have spoken it. Verse 16. Here's these evil arrows. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows, the evil arrows of famine. People, when there's, when there's famine and drought, that's God giving you a wake-up call, telling you there's wickedness in the land. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread." so will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. Two-legged beasts? We got millions of them everywhere. And they shall bereave thee. You know what it means to be bereaved? Bereaved it means you've lost family. I will send upon you famine and evil beasts and they shall bereave thee and pestilence, disease, and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. So famine, evil beasts, and pestilence and war are God's arrows. Think about it. Think about it. Those are God's arrows of destruction upon a wicked nation. So when you uh, when you look at America today, we've either got drought, flooding, disease, evil beasts, killing people. You know that God's judgment, his evil arrows of judgment are upon us. Well, actually, wrath. His arrows are wrath. That's, they're not just judgment. They're 
their wrath. God's people are under wrath right now. So, so I wish I had more good news, but I really don't. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.